الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاتقياء واصحابه الاسرياء اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان قالت الملائكه يا مريم ان الله يبشرك بكلمه من اسم المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها في الدنيا والاخره ومن المقربين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي نفسي بيده لا يشك ان ينزل فيك ابن مريم حكما عدا لا يكسب الصيد ويقتل الخنزير ويدع الجزيه ويفيد الماء حتى لا يقبله احد وتكون السجده الواحده خير من الدنيا وما فيها او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان رب رب العزه ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم يا رب اسمك دل زنا بالعلماء اي بيجن ان ذا نيم اوف الله ذانك ان بريز ان جلوريفاي ان سيك اس فورنس ان اسك ان تو سند ذا انفينيت ميرسي ابون ذا بيلوف ان بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ان اول ذا مسجز بيفور هيم to forgive our sins and to guide us on the right path to lighten our hearts with his love love for his beloved prophet love for those whom he loves and love for those who love him and enable us all to live like muslims die like muslims and rise like muslims on the day of judgment a few days ago many people throughout the world celebrated christmas christians celebrate christmas many of them don't that many of you sitting here mashallah might go around saturday evening sunday evening doing a gush of the big jamaat did you do that somebody there's a christian version of the big jamaat as well they do they gush and round sunday morning have you heard of them mashallah go our friends and go as witnesses they don't celebrate christmas many muslims celebrate it In fact, this year and last year, the biggest Christmas tree wasn't in Rome or Canterbury or Worcestershire or York or London, Paris, New York. Uh, it was in Dubai. It did cost a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand pounds. It cost eleven million dollars. And they put up real gold, real gold, which would be diamonds. And emeralds for millions of pounds, 11 million dollars it cost them this year. Abu Dhabi. So while many Muslims might have been celebrating Christmas, many Christians were not. And in the Quran, what the Qari's have recited in that passage, there is a hint. Obviously, the Quran doesn't tell any prophet's birthdays. The Bible doesn't tell us. But it doesn't tell the Christians the day Jesus was born either. But there are hints in there, hints in the Quran and in the Bible that Isa al Islam or Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. We as Muslims we believe in Isa al Islam and to be a mighty messenger of Allah. Allah has praised Isa al Islam in the Quran throughout. But I, before I go into that, I just want to clarify this point about Isa al Islam not being born on the 25th of December. The Quran says when Isa al Islam was born, that when the time came for Maryam to give him birth, she was resting under a palm tree, and resting under a palm tree, and incidentally, Maryam, at the time of the birth of Jesus. According to Christian scholars, she was anything between 12, 13, 14 years of age. Many Christians and non-Muslims are very keen to criticize the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for his marriage to Aisha radhiyallahu anha. Uh, but they forget, as one brother said, before they throw any rocks on Muslims, they ought to understand they live in a glass house. You know what happens when you live in a glass house? What's going to happen if you throw stone at someone? You're gonna smash your own house. And they say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam married as Aisha radhiyallahu anha at the age of nine for a specific reason. And mashallah, she did so much service to Deen and Islam and Muslims 
And Maryam Salam similarly, but she was also a very young girl, barely 12, 13 years old when she gave birth to Isa salam. And having given birth for any, for any woman, birth or labor is a very crucial and critical time. Even now, in spite of all the medical advance, many women, thousands in fact, throughout the world pass away during labor. And the Prophet وسلم, has assured them, if any woman, Muslim woman, dies during labor while giving birth, then she dies as a shaheed. Such a difficult, crucial time upon a woman. And many of you, mashallah, many young, young people who might be married, or even those who've grown older, who probably, your memories, if they haven't fainted, and you would know that probably the first birth that your wife gave of your first child. The first birth is always very difficult, and especially for very young girls. And Maryam salam, having given birth to Isa salam, while resting under a palm tree. Uh, the Christian scholars, they, they think that Jesus was born in a stable. But he was, the Quran says he was born uh, in an orchard under a palm tree. And why? When she gave him birth, and Allah commanded her in that very subtle, delicate state, having just given birth to a child. O Maryam, wa husi ilayki bi jizim nakhla ki tusaqit alayki rutaban jalika. Maryam, shake this palm tree. Many fruit, uh, fruit trees, they are not very high in height, and their branches sway out, and when in the season of spring, when the fruits weigh the branches down, it's easy to pick them out. Sometimes people pick the fruits with their hands, sometimes they throw stones, sometimes with large sticks they, they shake the, the branches or the bunch and the fruits fall. But not on a palm tree, date tree. It's very tall and the fruit is right at the top. And people often have to climb up to get dates down. And for any person to shake a palm tree, very difficult. Even if you've got 26-inch bicycle and you go to the gym every day, no problem. No problem. If somebody goes to the gym daily, no problem. Go to the gym, mashallah, keep fit. It says in Hadith, Allah prefers a strong Muslim to a Muslim. <coughs> Allah has mentioned story of, in the Quran about, about a certain man. Allah says, وَزَادَهُ بَسْتَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ Allah gave him knowledge and Allah gave him a solid body as well. So it's good to be strong spiritually, psychologically and physically. And even if a strong man who goes to the gym daily was to shake a palm tree and struggle to, to have any effect, let alone a 12-year-old girl who's just given birth to her first son. And having given birth, Allah says, Huzi ilayki bi jizim nakhla. O Maryam, shake it. What could have Maryam done? Except barely managed to put her hands there. Allah, Allah is telling us, I told her to do your best, then he will do the rest. <laughs> Whatever we want to do, we got to do our best. This dunya is Darul Asbab. Everything happens uh, with a cause and means. And every cause and means has an effect. And this is one of the reasons why Isa salam, was raised from the heavens and then will be sent down afterwards. Hopefully Allah willing, I will explain. If Allah wanted the dates, Allah could have just given her dates. Allah had been giving her fruits out of season in her womb anyway. But on this special moment, Allah is, Allah is telling us that Allah told Maryam, You do your best, I will do the rest. You shake the palm tree and then I will cause fresh dates to fall from the people. And in Palestine, in the months of December and January, there are no dates on any palm tree. Some of you might share, have WhatsApp on your smartphones. Many people carry smartphones these days. Small phones have become very smart, people have become less smart. If only people were as smart as some of the phones you have these days, we wouldn't have half the problems. Ah, MashaAllah. And last year, many brothers were sharing, because last year in December, in Jerusalem, it snowed 10 inches. So if there's heavy snow in Palestine in December, very cold. And dates are not a winter fruit. They are a sort of warm climate fruit. This is why in England you don't have dates. Because the climate can't 
It can't produce those sort of lakes. And the lakes are there, late spring, early summer. So according to the Quran, when Isa Islam was born, it was either late spring or early summer. The Bible gives out a similar message. The Bible says when Jesus was born, the shepherds were overlooking their flocks. And shepherds don't let their flocks out in December and, 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 and January. It's too cold uh, for sheep to be out, for goats to be out. Uh, so they take them indoors and they leave them inside. They bring them out again when the weather changes and becomes good. So according to the Bible, Jesus wasn't born in December. This is why many Jehovah's Witnesses, the Christian version of the league, you want, uh, they don't celebrate Christmas. They know Jesus wasn't born in December, so there's no reason to celebrate in December. Many brothers will be celebrating New Year's Eve, mashallah, tonight. <laughs> Every day is a fresh day. The Quran says, Kulla yawmin huwa fi shan. You want to celebrate? The, the Prophet of Allah has allowed us two celebrations. Eid or Fitr or the Eid or Adha. That's the time to celebrate, mashallah. You fast the whole month of Ramadan. Celebrations are some achievements. You've achieved a state of piety, taqwa, goodness, purity. So you've got every reason to celebrate. So celebrate. One month of fasting, mashallah, discipline, training, spiritual training. You've acquired a state of taqwa, piety. So you have every reason to celebrate <coughs> after Ramadan. New Year's Eve. Uh, today the sun rose at 826, tomorrow will be the same, 0825, something like that. Today the sun set at 403, tomorrow probably 404. The length of the day is almost the same, the length of the night is almost the same. Same run, uh, same sun, probably cloudy today, probably be cloudy tomorrow as well. Uh, same day as today as tomorrow. So what's the reason to celebrate? You celebrate on, a, on an occasion, it's just another day, these days have been set by men and many of these dates coincide with ancient pagan festivals subhanallah so it's all become commercial okay for christians there might be a reason according to what they believe to celebrate christmas but what have japanese and chinese people got to do with christmas <laughs> even they celebrate christmas now as, as well as many muslims subhanallah as i was saying isa salatu was salam he's one of the mighty messengers of allah all messengers of Allah are noble and special. You can become a Hafiz, Mawlana, Alama, Qari, Mufti, Shaykh al Hadith, but one thing nobody can become because they want to be, or because they are pious, they are generous, they are noble, which all prophets are. That doesn't authorize you or elevate you to the status of a prophet. Allah chooses whom He will make a prophet. And there are different levels amongst prophets. There are, as there are different levels in every walk of life. وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضٍ بَعْضٍ سُخْرِيَّةٍ Allah has placed people in different levels in every walk of life. In business, in knowledge, in other things, mashallah. Are all the Mawlanas the same and, in, and equal in knowledge? All the business people in their business skills, all the builders in their building skills? No, everyone's at a different level. All people, so that people can get along with one another, benefit from one another, help one another. Can you imagine if everybody was the same? I uh, know there'll be nothing, there'll be nothing to do for anybody because everybody can do whatever others can do. So Allah has placed people on different levels. Allah has placed different prophets on different levels. From amongst the prophets there were some who were Rasuls. Even amongst the Rasuls there are many. Allah has elevated some over others. Uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam wasn't just a prophet and a rasul, he was one of the mighty messengers of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, referred to in the Quran, Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, the five mighty messengers, Nu alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Uh, they are the five great messengers of Allah. Isa alayhi salam is one of them. Quran refers to him as Ruh Ukminu, spirit from Allah. All the prophets had their own kalima. La ilaha illallah Adam Safiullah, Nuhun Najidullah, La ilaha illallah Ibrahim Khalilullah, Musa Kalimullah, Dawood Khalifatullah, Ismail Zabihullah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every prophet had their own kalima. Isa alayhi salam's kalima was La ilaha illallah Isa, Ruhullah, Spirit of Allah. A spirit of Allah. And Isa alayhi salam isn't the only spirit. 
Isa the Islam is a spirit from Allah. Jibreel the Islam has also been referred to in the Quran as a spirit. Tanazzalul malaikatu wal ruh. In the night of power, Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan, angels descend with the ruh, with the spirit, who is Jibreel. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِالْرُوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانِ الْعَرَبِيِّ الْمُبِينَ Allah sent the Quran on the heart of Rasulullah through Jibreel, through the Ruh Al-Ameen, the trustworthy spirit and soul. Our Ruh Al-Ameen. So Isa Alayhi Islam is Ruh Allah. Isa Alayhi Islam in the Quran has also been referred to as Kalimatullah. أَلْقَاهَا إِلَىٰ مَرْيَمَ وَرُوحٌ مِّنُ a word of Allah he came into being with Allah's word. Allah said, Kun fayakun. Inna masala isa inda Allah ka masala adam. In this surah, Surah Ali Imran, from Kalam al Rahman, from Quran. In this surah, in this chapter, Allah has spoken extensively about Christian beliefs and their ways. Surah, uh, surah Ali Imran, Allah wa Akbar. Kalimatullah Alqaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minu Allah says in Surah Ali Imran Inna mathala Isa in the light of mathali Adam The example of Isa in the eyes of Allah is like that of Adam Many of our Christian friends They think because Well every person has a father Jesus didn't have a human father So if he didn't have a father then God must be his father Allah breaks that down, no problem. Allah said, how can you talk like that? Do you not see, inna mathala isa inda laika mathali Adam? You also believe in Adam. If Jesus is son of God because he didn't have a human father, then Adam must be a bigger son of God because he didn't have a mother or father. But even they don't believe in son of God. But Allah says, no problem. Inna mathala Isa inda laika mathali Adam. The example of Isa in the eyes of Allah is like Adam. Just as Allah made him, خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابَ Allah made him from creating. مَقَالَ لَهُ كُنْ Allah said, كُنْ Be, be is Allah's word. كُنْ فَيَكُونْ Allah said, be and he was. So Adam alayhi salam was word of Allah. So is Isa alayhi salam in that sense word of Allah. Because he came into being with Allah's word. But for our Christian friends, that's another problem, another difficult issue. They say, he was the word, he became, well, he, he was the word, he became the word, he became God. He thinks he is God. They think he is God because he is the word. Allah will, Allah will explain this. And for Muslims, it's no problem to accept Isa alayhi salam as the word of Allah because he came into being with Allah's word. Allah said, be, be is the word of Allah. So he became, just as Adam Islam became Adam, he became alive, Allah blew into him. Just as Allah blew into Isa Islam his soul, so did Allah blow into Adam his soul. Allah gathered the angels and said to them, when I when I make him to myself, when I Suited him out, fashioned him, made a statue. When I fast to feed him in Ruhi, I blow my soul into him. You must all make sajda to him. So when Allah blew into him his soul, oh, then he became alive. All the angels bow down. All the angels unanimously, simultaneously bow down to him. Uh, so if being soul, spirit from Allah, word of Allah, for Isa alayhi salam is enough to make him into son of God, then na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah, Adam alayhi salam deserves to be a bigger son of God. But no one regards him as son of God. And there is no reason to regard anyone as son of God. Because they are all creation of Allah. Beloveds of Allah, servants of Allah, messengers of Allah, beloveds of Allah are not sons of Allah. It's not fitting for Allah to have any son. Many years ago, when people from here went over to India, now Marshall is the other way around. We are paying a return visit. Now back in the late 17th century, when the British first started going to India, they initially went over to put up some tea stores on coastal towns. They got visa from Jahangir, the then emperor of India, to set up some 
strolled on coastal towns, then they decided to stay. Then they decided to take over the whole country. They didn't want to come back. This is why people who come here and are paying a return because they don't want to go back either. <laughs> Allah Akbar. Because that's the lesson they've been taught. So they sent, they, they sent people over, they sent many missionaries over as well. And missionaries were trained. One of the most famous of all was a reverend called Reverend Karl Fonda. He was initially a German, originally, but trained up by the British and to preach Christianity in India. Especially, he learned Arabic and Persian, he was fluent. He had many debates with Muslim scholars. In one of those debates, he was really pushing his luck, challenging people, and trying to prove the divinity of Isa Islam and say, Jesus was the Son of God. And because he had official backing, so people were afraid to come forward and argue because if they argue and debate, then you know they will be picked up, rounded off. And so, but Allah raises people who defend His cause. One simple baker who used to, you know, in our country, well, in here, mashallah, bakeries are very elaborate, nice, and it's, it's a cushy lifestyle being a baker. But in our countries, bakers are mean those who make the new roti, and you know the, those big holes in, in, in the ground. They throw wood in there, they, mashallah, they, they eat it up. And then women in villages used to bring their atta, their, their dough, and they would then, mashallah, make chapatis and put them in the tandoori in the oven. So one of those guys, the chapati makers, he came over and he said, listen, man, take it easy, keep cool, don't get too excited. <laughs> he goes, how old are you? Well, he said about 40, 50. He goes, you married? Yeah, I'm married. You've got children. How long have you been married? He said about 20 odd years. You've got children? Yeah, four children. How long the world been around? Millions of years. You mean to tell me you've been married 20 years, you've got four or five kids, the world's been around, God's been around millions of years. And he said, you go, why son? <laughs> so if having a son is a good thing for God, he must have had sons by the tons. <laughs> so what? You've done a better job than God. Having four or five sons, mashallah. Uh, but that's for Allah. It's good for people, mashallah. Uh, to have multiple children, mashallah, many children. Nowadays, people don't want children. Uh, they don't want children at all. Uh, they call it family planning. <laughs> they call, they, Ali radiallahu anhu, Allah blessed him, mashallah. He had 14 sons. Other people, mashallah, 10, 12, mashallah. Uh, one of our elders, Mulan Abdul Fiz Makisa, have you heard of the name? He's one of our mashaykh, mashallah. His father, Aji Abdul Haqsab, he had 17 sons, mashallah. This is recent. I speak to many families now, mashallah, and they say, oh yeah, I come from a big family as well. But nowadays, oh, you know, I mean, it's very tough these days, you know. It's not easy bringing up children, but mashallah. Allah gives risk. A child, each child brings his own risk. So if having sons was a big thing, for, for, for God to have a son was a good thing, then God would have had sons by the tons. It's nice for us to have sons, but for Allah, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ يَتَّخِذَ مِنْ وَلَدٍ It's not fitting for Allah to have a son. If Allah wanted, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ يَتَّخِذَ مِنْ وَلَدٍ سُبْحَانًا لَوْ أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نَتَّخِذَ وَلَدًا لَتَّخَذْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا If Allah had wanted sons, Allah could have had sons by the tons. But for Allah, it's not fitting to have a son. Uh, so if Isa is supposedly a son of God for being born without a father, then Adam Islam, Nauzu Billah, Nauzu Billah should have been a bigger son of Allah. But Allah says no. For Allah, He doesn't have a son. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad. He doesn't have sons, He doesn't have parents, no one's begotten Him, He hasn't been begotten by anyone. There's no one like Allah. So Isa al Islam is word of Allah. Isa al Islam is spirit from Allah. His example is like that of Adam. Allah made him, Allah said, be, Allah grew into his soul because he came about with Allah's word. Be hence his word of Allah. So Isa al Islam is word of Allah, spirit from Allah. And he's also been referred to in the Quran as La ilmul lissa, sure sign of Qiyamah. He's a sure sign of Qiyamah. Qiyamah cannot come until Isa al Islam returns to this world. 
And he comes back. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it with so much stress. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about the return and the coming, second coming of Isa alayhi salam. So much so, from all the prophecies made by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the return of Jesus, return of Isa alayhi salam is probably the most common and most frequent prophecy of Rasulullah. Even Mirza Abulah Muhammad Qadiani has stated this in his sayings. From all the prophecies made by Rasulullah, the return of Isa alayhi salam is the most common one. And reported in no less than 40 different narrations, Sahih narrations, reported by no less than 30 different companions. It's one of those absolute, undoubted, undoubted, undeniable issues. It's not just a passing by trivial issue. It's one of those fundamental aqaid of Muslims. The ulama teach this not as a trivial Freud issue, but as an aqidah issue. Believe, we believe Isa Islam will return to this world before the end of time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith reported in Sahih Bukhari said, وَالَّذِي nafsi بِيَدِهِ I swear by him who holds my life in his hands. لَيُوشِكَنَّا يَنْزِلَ فِيكُمْ إِبْنِ مَرْيَمِ Very soon, surely, definitely, undeniably, unquestionably, and Yanzil will come down upon you. Yanzil Afikum Ibn Maryam. Who? Son of? Ibn means son. Ibn Maryam, son of? Ibn Maryam will come down, not son of Chiraz Bibi. You know who son of Chiraz Bibi was? Mirza Abdullah Muhammad Qadiani. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I swear by him who holds my life in his hands very soon, surely, definitely, undeniably, undoubtedly, son of Maryam will come down upon you <laughs> as a just ruler, hakam al adala, as a just ruler. When he will come down, Allahu Akbar. He won't just come down as an ordinary man. The Jews, uh, the Christians refer to Isa alayhi salam as the king of Jews. But, he, but Jesus in his first coming, Isa alayhi salam, he never ruled even in a small street, let alone the town and all the Jews. The Jews didn't even accept him. So how can he be the king of the Jews? But on his second coming, not only the Jews, the world will accept him. He will rule all over the world. And why shouldn't he Allah has made him such? <coughs> And he will be a just ruler. The first thing he will do when he comes, his immediate task will be to deal with the Jah, the Antichrist. And he will kill him. He will chase him. And when the when Isa Islam comes down, the Prophet said he will come down on the eastern minaret in Damascus. In the Minaret al Bayda Sharqi. Eastern minaret, eastern white minaret in Damascus. And he will, the angels will bring him and leave him on the top of the minaret. Again, here, Ulama stated, why? If they wanted, just as Allah could have dropped the dates, which were in December, they explained early Julia, early Ali Salah. If Allah wanted, he could have commanded the angels from wherever Isa al Islam is now in the heavens above all those millions of miles. They say, well, our solar system here with the sun in its center is probably the smallest of out of the solar systems. The nearest star to the earth is a star called Alpha Centauri. Many times bigger, takes light traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second, not an hour. How much does your Ferrari do? <laughs> A light traveling 300,000 kilometers an hour takes two years, two years to, from Alpha Centauri to come down here. And that's the nearest star. There are millions of such stars in this Milky Way galaxy. And in this, outside this Milky Way galaxy, there are millions of other galaxies. In our cluster, they call it millions of galaxies. Millions of such solar systems with sun in the middle, planets orbiting around it. Are millions of such systems, this sun that we see, or even we don't see, <laughs> often, 
Uh, this is the smallest of the systems, millions of other systems, many hundreds and thousands and millions of times larger in the Milky Way galaxy and under millions of galaxies like the Milky Way galaxy in a cluster. And there are millions of clusters Allah knows in this whole universe. Uh, so Isa Islam, where he is, mashallah, on the second, third heaven, angels will bring him all these billions and trillions of miles and leave him on top of the eastern minaret. But why can't they just bring him down another hundred feet? Say all well, the trouble and the problem. And they say because it, up there there are no asbabs. Everything is kun fayakun. Be and it's done. You wish and it will happen. But here you got to do something to make it happen. Allah has made this dunya darul asbab. So just as Maryam had to do her best, then Allah did the rest. Similarly, Isa and Islam will come down on the top of the minaret, and then a ladder will be brought. Look at the amount of details Rasulullah mentioned. Ladder will be brought and then Isa alayhi salam will come down on the ladder. The Prophet ﷺ spoke extensively of Isa alayhi salam because Isa alayhi salam spoke extensively about Rasulullah ﷺ. One of the main missions of Isa alayhi salam, according to the Quran and the Bible, the Quran says Isa alayhi salam used to say, وَإِذْ قَالَ, وإذ قال Isa ibn Maryam, يَا بَنِي سَرَائِي لَيْنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ O Bani Israel, children of Israel. And the Bible says that Jesus used, I said, uh, he made it plain clear. Jesus wasn't meant to be for the Europeans, for the Americans, the Africans, and Asians, and others. Jesus said, I've only been sent, only been sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He wasn't meant to be for anybody else. The Bible says that, the Quran says that. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيْسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ O you children of Israel, إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ I've been sent as a messenger of Allah unto you. مُسَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ I testify to what is in front of me from Torah. وَمُبَشِّرًا بَعْلَى رَسُولُ أَحْمَدِ And I'm giving you the good news. Good news of a messenger to come after me. His name will be Ahmad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was referring to the beloved prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to previous prophets and in the previous scriptures and in the heavens he is referred to as Ahmad. In the Quran and to us he is referred to as Muhammad. Ahmad, Muhammad, they are both from Ham. Ahmad means the one who has praised Allah the most. Muhammad means the one who has been praised the most. No one in the history of humanity has been spoken as much about as the as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Christians can't present a decent-sized biography of Jesus. There's hardly anything in the Bible to tell about Jesus. But Muslims and non-Muslims have been writing about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not just in small books, in volumes and volumes. And Allah predicted that in right in the beginning in the Quran. Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. Oh my beloved Prophet, I swear by the pen and what people will write, what will they write? Ma anta biniyamati rabbika bi majnoon. They will write about you, that you are not crazy. You are a great man. Wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. You are on such sublime character. How many of you probably heard, you know how many repeating as well? It's a reminder. Muslims have been writing in every ages, Christians and non-Muslims -Muslim, have been writing about Rasulullah in the 1970s, an American, a non-Muslim, a Christian, he wrote a book and entitled it, A Ranking of the 100 Most Influential Men in History. And you know who he put number one? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He put Jesus number three, put Isaac Newton number two. Isaac Newton number two, Jesus number three, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam number one. And he gave his reason and he said in his opinion, he is the only man in the history of humanity to have been immensely successful at both secular and religious level. There were great secular leaders, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan and others, uh, but they had no religious influence whatsoever. Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, he was a great religious spiritual leader like many others, uh, but with no secular influence. Uh, you can't spend all your life in a masjid or just in the church. You need to get out and about, you need to eat and drink and do something. Uh, 
So in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you get the best of everything. So Isa alayhi salatu wasallam, one of his main missions was to pave the way for coming of Rasulullah. The Quran says, wherever Isa alayhi salam went, he spoke about, he would deliver sermon, he would tell him, I am a messenger of Allah, believe in Allah, obey him, and wait for the coming of the mighty messenger of Allah. The Bible says, Jesus used to say, I tell you the prince of the world is coming. Unless I go away, he will not come. When I go away, I will send him from the Father. He will glorify me. From all the religious leaders in the world, there is none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have spoken so good of Isa alayhi salam. The Jews still regard Isa alayhi salam to be illegitimate son of Maryam. You know what that means? Illegitimate son of Maryam. Born to a son who was born to a woman who was not married. In English, well, historically, in the English dictionary, there's a very nasty word to describe such a child. It begins with B, ends with D. Under 30, 40 years ago, even in the West, if someone was born into wedlock, people didn't look upon him favorably. He was referred to as a D man. And now, unfortunately, every other child being born is a bee. Do you understand? I don't want to. <coughs> the Jews regard Isa al Islam Jesus to be illegitimate son of Maryam. Na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. Others, Buddhist, Hindu, Sikhs, then Jesus might have been, might not have been. They don't care who Jesus was. Atheists would rather think he's a minister, Mr. Nobody. From all the religious leaders, only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke so well of Jesus. Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet said, Ana awla nasi bi Isa bi Maryam. Me and Jesus are like this. You know, like they say nowadays, we buddies. <laughs> we buddies. From all the people in the world, I'm the closest to Isa ibn Maryam. There is no other messenger of Allah between me and him. Isa Islam spoke extensively of the coming of Jesus. He said, I tell you, the comforter, the comforter, the prince of the world, huh? the one who teach you all things. No one has told anybody about every aspect of life except Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the moment you rise, even the Bible doesn't teach people, the Christians, how Jesus worshipped Allah. Jesus didn't sing carols. The Bible says he would get on his hands and knees to worship God. You just pray, Isha, so how did you pray? You stood there, sang? No, you got on your hands and knees. You stood in Allah's presence. And then you bow down, then you got on your hands and knees. This is how Jesus worshipped Allah. The Quran says, Isa al Islam used to say, Ya Bani Israel, Abdullah Rabbi wa Rabbakum. Oh, you children of Israel, worship Allah, your Lord and my Lord. He's the Lord of all. And they came to Jesus and asked him, Oh, Master, oh, teacher, what's the most important thing? And he said that you should love the one and only God with all your heart. And only worship him, only he deserves to be worshipped. And so Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, Allahu Akbar, mighty messenger of Allah. Wherever he went, he said, he will teach you all things. The one who's coming, he will teach you all things. He will glorify me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about him. Because Isa alayhi salam used to speak about him, Rasulullah said, whoever has done me any favor, I will repay all their favors in this world. Except one man. You know who he was? Abu Bakr, the Prophet said, Allah will personally repay him on the day of Qiyam. Whatever favors Isa Islam did to Rasulullah by speaking about him, the Prophet did him a favor in turn by speaking about him. <coughs> Jesus used to say, Isa Islam used to say, Muhammad is coming. Rasulullah said, Jesus is coming. Isa Islam is coming. And so much so, the Prophet said, I swear by him who holds my life in his hands. Uh, that very soon, surely, definitely, undeniably, unquestionably, son of Maryam will descend upon you. And when he does, 
Uh, he won't just be going around uh, just in a, in a simple way, just begging people now to accept him and believe in him. This time when Isa Islam comes, the world will accept him. Not just the Jews, and the world will accept him. All the Christians, before then he dies, and he will die. And he did not die. He did not conquer death. No one can conquer death. The only one not to die is him. Other than him, everyone is destined to die. Jesus did die on the cross. He wasn't taken anywhere near the cross. He was raised. I'll try and discuss that, inshallah. Uh, but when he comes down, before he dies, there will not remain any person from the people of the book. And there are two nations who are given books, not just Christians. Jews were also given books. And the Jews, they were all given books. The Jews, and initially the Jews were side by, many were side by the Jal. And Imam Mahdi will be in place. He will deal with them, but things will be on a higher level. Need someone on a higher level. So Allah will send Isa alayhi salam. Come down and talk to the minaret. Ladder will be brought. He will step down on the ladder. Here again, lesson. You want to do something in this world, you got to do your best. Don't just tell Allah to do the rest. Allah will do the rest after you've done your best. So Isa alayhi salam will be brought down on the ladder. And then, mashallah, prayer will be about to start. The Mahdi will say, please, you are Rasulullah. He says, not this, I won't leave this time. You leave, pray. You leave, I will pray behind you. Rasulullah said, what will be your condition when even a Maryam will descend upon you and the Imam will be from you? <laughs> imam. But imam, minkum. imam will be from you, mashallah. Then Isa alayhi salam will resume command of the army. The Jal, when he will see Isa alayhi salam, he will run. And he will run, Isa alayhi salam will chase him and kill him at where Lut is now, presently near Tel Aviv. And the Jal will be dealt with, and then the Juj Majuj will appear, and with Isa alayhi salam's dua, Allah will get rid of them, and Allah will, but then the whole world, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said, Yu lakallahu fi zamani al milala kullaha illa al-Islam. In his time, when he comes again, all other nations will become extinct. It will only be the only thing to survive and remain will be Islam. Islam isn't just what we call Islam. All the religions Allah sent were Islam. Isa Islam was a Muslim, Musa Islam was a Muslim, Nuh Islam was a Muslim. And all the children who are on the on the deen, millet of Ibrahim salam, who are Samma Kumul Muslimin, he gave you this name of Muslims. But now obviously Muslims are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And only they will remain. There will not remain a single house made of mud or brick in which the Kalima Islam will not enter. Whether anyone accepts it willingly or unwillingly, it will happen in the time of Isa alayhi salam. And then there will be so much goodness, so much barakah. One of the first things to happen, all the crosses will be broken because they are wrongly assigned to Isa alayhi salam. He didn't go anywhere near the cross. So he will break the crosses and then you won't need plenty of permission to build a new masjid. All the churches will automatically turn into masjid. <laughs> Mashallah. Wayaqtulu al-khinzir. Actually, see, we'll probably go out of business as well. Wayaqtulu al-khinzir. <coughs> on your local supermarket, there won't be any shelves stocking pig, pork, bacon, whatever. Uh, it will all be halal, all halal, then, inshallah. jizya, <laughs> warfare will be abolished. That will be the last and final conflict upon the return of Isa. There will be no more wars after that. The world will be filled with peace. So much peace, not just amongst people, but even amongst animals. So much so, the Prophet wasallam said, Lions will graze with camels. Wolves will drink on the same pond as sheep. And children will play with snakes. And one anar, you know what anar is? That pomegranate? Many years ago, when I was young, my father opened a fruit shop. 
and because unfortunately not much grows in this country except carrots and potatoes, <laughs> and so, so many of the natives haven't seen some of these tropical foods. But only when people started coming and importing, mashallah. So in those days, uh, in the market, food market, my dad saw a crate of pomegranate and he bought it to sell in the shop. So some people had seen it, so they bought some and they went home. And then after a while, little English white boy, he came, can I have some of those onions? Because <laughs> the pomegranate looks from the outside a bit like an onion. He didn't know what it's called because he hadn't seen it. Uh, but he loved the taste. You know, the one, of, one of those onions with those red seeds in them, they were nice. Uh, one pomegranate will suffice a whole family. Uh, that will be the barakah in the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So Isa alayhi salam isn't just a historical figure. He is a historical figure. But he is a future. He is a personality at whose hand whole humanity will become one. A total unity. People talk about peace. At the moment they only go to the European Union. Uh, but in Israel, Islam's time will be global union. Uh, across Africa, Asia, America, the world will become a truly global un union, mashallah. Uh, so Israel, Islam is hope and future of humanity. So Isa alayhi salam will come back away on the eastern minaret in Damascus when only Allah knows. And Allah says in the Quran, when now Musa, who is a sure sign of Qiyamah, he will definitely come down when only Allah knows. Uh, there was a man, he said, his name was Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiyami. When we talk about prophets, we say alayhi salam, we talk about sahaba, we say radiallahu anhu, when we talk about awiyya, pious shares, we say rahimahumullah. When we talk about someone like Qadiyani, we simply have to say Qadiyani, la'anatullah, la'anatullahi alayhi. Because Allah says in the Quran, Allah curses the liars, zalims, wrongdoers. There is no one, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ إِفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا No bigger zalim wrongdoer than someone who lies upon Allah, lies upon Rasulullah, lies upon the people. Michael Hart, he wrote a ranking of the 100 most influential men in history, put Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa number one. And I say if anyone was to compile a ranking of the most prolific liars in the history of humanity, number one will be undoubtedly Unchallenged with the Allah Akbar Qadiyani, Lanatullahi. He said, when well, the Prophet said he's coming, 1300 years have passed, he hasn't come, he ain't coming, so I'm your man. <laughs> so accept me. Well, people said, well, the Prophet said, son of Maryam will come, but your mother, she's not Maryam, she's Chirah's baby. He goes, that's all right, doesn't matter. <laughs> and then they said, well, the Prophet Sallallahu said that when Isa Islam descends, he'll descend on the eastern minaret in Damascus. You were born. You grew up here. You studied here. Your father employed servants to teach you. Isa Islam and others didn't have a teacher. No Prophet had a teacher. You had teachers. And then you started looking for a job. You couldn't get a job. He failed his GCSEs, the equivalent of GCSEs. So a person who can't even do GCSEs probably, he's going to be inside. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, and he will come down on the eastern minaret in Damascus. He said, no problem, let's build one, I'll go up and then come down. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <coughs> if somebody comes around, if a friend says to you, brother, come, let's go cruising, he will be but if somebody's father, mother was coming back from India, from Umrah, wherever, and you say, brother, sorry, I can't go, my dad's coming back. I've got to go and pick him up. Or he's gone to my uncle's house, auntie's house, I've got to bring him back. Why? Why you got to bring him back? Because he has, he's already gone somewhere. That's why he's coming back. You understand? No? Yeah. You've always gone at that. Who's going to come down? The one who has gone up first. So if Isa Islam is coming down and the Prophet has spoken extensively of his return, then he must have gone up first to be able to come down. So Isa Islam can't descend 
unless there is an ascension first. Uh, so Isa is he's ascended, living in the heavens. How is he going to survive over there? Uh, so his ascension has to be linked to his personality to be able to facilitate this, to enable him to live in the heavens with the angels. Because there's no McDonald's and your local peri peri shop over there to eat. So Isa salatu wassalam, he has to have a personality which suffices him, enables him to survive in the heaven and hence to give him that personality. Allah gave him that miraculous conception and birth. So when Isa salatu wassalam, was conceived, Maryam, as Qari Sahib recited in that recitation, mashallah, so wonderful. Uh, when Maryam salam, reached the age where she matured, she went out to the eastern side. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمْ إِذِنْ تَبَدَتْ مِنَا لِيَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًّا فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِنْ دُونِ الْحِجَابَ فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَبِيًّا She went out and Allah said to Jibreel, uh, Jibreel is the appearance of such a wonderful, perfect man. As perfect a man as you could imagine and want. You know, many kind of men looking for wives. They want, you know, nice height, perfect, good looks, everything. Whatever, mashallah. You know, perfect in every way. So we may want a good husband as well. Mashallah. So Allah sent the Jibreel alayhi salam in that perfect appearance. Many people, young men, as soon as they see someone, Whoa! They get taken back. People think women are immune to that. No, women also get taken back. Allah has mentioned a story in the Quran of a man who is very, very handsome. The Prophet said, when he met him, he said, Verily, Yusuf, he really was handsome. Yeah. All the beauty Allah placed in this world, he gave half only to Yusuf, half to everybody else. All the wonderful people, mashallah, handsome, beautiful women, handsome men. And all the beauty in this world is all part of that half which Allah gave all the creation and Yusuf carried only half for himself. So naturally when Zulekha was growing up, when he was growing up in the house of Zulekha, she couldn't resist. And they say there are two things which you just simply can't hide. Ek ishq or dusra mushk. If someone very nice food, mashallah, shamamat al you cover up, mashallah, you need a nice trail, mashallah, fragrant trail. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would walk down the street or, or, or an alley, Sahaba would say, we could be new Rasul and walk by because we could smell such fragrance. The names, Allah loves most of Dullah and Rahman. But anyway, Yusuf. Yusuf, come on in. When they saw him, they just became crazy. Akbar, they adored him. They lost, they lost all senses. Whoa, man. Basha. Whoa, he's just gorgeous. He's not human. He's an angel. They you know what they were doing. They thought they had fruits and oh, that's Yusuf. Huh? That's him. Allahu Akbar. So women can also lose the plot. So Maryam, alayhi salam, but she wasn't like that. The Prophet said, many a great men have come in the past nations, but no woman greater than my true mother. One is Maryam, the mother of Isa salam, and the other is Asiya, wife of Fir'aun. She was to be, Allahu Akbar, one of the, one of the most noblest women ever. Now, Maryam salam, the mother of Isa salam. Once we had, our, we, we had a meeting, there was a Christian priest, he'd gone to India, spent many years there, just as we, we like to present Islam to Christians. They want to present Christianity to Muslims. So he was looking for cheap victims. And mashallah, looking to lure people. So he would come to the masjid and say, let's have a meeting for better understanding. Not debate, a meeting for better understanding. We share our beliefs. Uh, we share our beliefs. One of my teachers, Allah Khalid Mahmoud Sahib, somebody said to him something similar. He goes, I don't share beliefs. What do you want to take up your beliefs for? <laughs> you know, share me. <laughs> Give a take to share. You share mine, I share yours. Because you keep your beliefs. I don't want your beliefs. I'm happy to discuss reason. Uh, but I don't want to share. Look at tabadala khayal. Tabadala means you take mine, I take yours. I'm not prepared to give up my belief. 
It's up to you if you want to accept or not. Uh, so he was very, mashallah, like that. So he, he was looking for opportunities to convert Muslims. So we talk about Maryam alayhi salam. And the Bible doesn't talk much about Maryam alayhi salam. In, the, in fact, the Quran speaks much more about Maryam than the Bible does. The Quran has dedicated a whole chapter to Maryam. A piety, purity, goodness. Allah says, what good fil kitab in Maryam? Oh my beloved prophet, talk about Maryam in the book. So when she saw Jibreel in the appearance of a man as good a man as any can be, those women lost their hearts. But Maryam, did she want to know? She said, oh, just keep your distance. Inni a'udhu bil rahmani minka in kunta taqiyya. If you are the man you appear to be, then stay away. I seek Allah's refuge. Don't come any near. He said, ana rabbi. Maryam, you see, relax, take it easy. I, I'm not who you think I am. And I don't have any evil intentions. Allah has sent me. I'm a messenger of your Lord. Allah has sent me. Allah wants to bless you with a pure son. Pure son. And when he said that, whoa, Maryam was as though knocked, knocked back. And she said, me have a son? Anna yukunu li gulam. How can I possibly have a boy? Walam yamsasni bashar, walam aku baghiya. No man's ever touched me. You think I'm like one of those girls I hear about on the streets? I'm just waiting for the next guy to come and give her a lift and pick her up? Uh, no. I'm not like that. And Jibreel said, indeed, Maryam kazaliki. Indeed, you are, you not like one of those women. You are a good woman yourself. Uh, but, Allah has already ordained it. Allah wants to make that son. Allah wants to give you. And you don't have a choice in this. You can't refuse. It's already been written and ordained. You will have a son. And but that son, Allah will make him a sign of his kudrat for the whole of humanity. And a sign of his mercy and blessings. It's an ordained issue. You can't say, no, you've got no choice. Maryam alayhi salam at that stage, she felt so embarrassed. What are people going to say when they see me bringing a son, bearing a child? Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasiyam mansiyya. If only I had been done away with a die long, long ago and become a forgotten affair, nobody even remembered me, that would have been better for me. Out of embarrassment, shame. Uh, the problem of shame to feel embarrassed on wrong affairs. This is a sign of Iman. Otherwise, when a person loses Hayah, you lose shame. The Prophet said, The Prophet said, When you've lost all shame, you don't feel embarrassed about anything. Uh, then you can do what you like, whether you do anything outside, willing you on the street or anyhow. The Prophet said, This Ummah, Israel <laughs> On my Ummah will come a time like it came upon Bani Israel, the Jews, the previous nation. Uh, like one foot is a total reflection and totally seem identical to the other. The Prophet said, So much so, Hatta in kana minhum man ata ummahu ala niyatan la kana fi ummati man yasna wazali. There will come a time upon this ummah that if in the previous nations there was a person in who disgraced, humiliated himself openly in public with his own mother, I won't elaborate. You understand? Yeah. Uh, Kiamat will not come until such a man is raised in my ummah. Uh, they say, oh, human rights, children's rights. Did you hear about that man in Austria? A few years back, I've forgotten his name. Fritz, yeah, yeah, something. Who fathered eight children or seven children from his own daughter? Yeah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sort of prophesied this 1400 years ago. Such things will happen. So Maryam had shame, she was embarrassed to feel, to, to face people. But this was a main issue for Hamalat. So Jibreel Islam blew into her and he conceived that spirit he brought from Allah. So hence, because Isa Islam was conceived with the blowing of Maryam, so he acquired his personality. 
Jibreel is Ruh, Ruh Alameen, Tanazar al Malaika to our Ruh. So Isa has that double personality. He's son of Maryam, human, son of Maryam. Throughout the Quran, Allah refers to him, son of Maryam. But because he was conceived with the blowing of Ruh al Amin, Sayyid al Malaika, he acquired that angel like personality as well. Hence his title, Ruh Allah, spirit from Allah. And East Jibreel alayhi salam who spent time with him and because Allah had a plan for him. And that special plan for Isa alayhi salatu was, was to send him back before the end of time to fight the Jal and kill the Jal. Overpower all evil at his hand. To overpower evil, you need that spiritual personality. Allah made Isa alayhi salam that spiritual personality. On behalf of all the prophets, because before sending the prophets to this world, in fact, before sending anybody to this world, Allah had two, two great conferences in the heavens, in the world of the souls. One was a general conference in which everybody, every soul ever to be sent to this world was gathered. Allah presented Himself. Allah am I not your Lord? And they all said, Bala indeed. Then Allah from there separated the souls of the prophets. Allah has mentioned this in the Quran as well. In in, in Quran, Surah Ali Imran, Allah said to the prophets, Allah gave them this proposal, this proposition, that when I give you book and wisdom, in other words, when I make you nabis and prophets, then it comes unto you my Rasul. That special one. You will have to believe in him and assist him. So Allah provided an opportunity for all the prophets to see Rasulullah, to believe in him in the night of Isra and Miraj. You know where? Battle Maqdas. They all met him. They all prayed behind him. And then Allah chose one special one on behalf of all the prophets to help Rasulullah. Because that was the condition. You all have to believe in him and help him. Allah knew that they won't actually be helping him. But you know, like you get a job or you get mission, there's terms and conditions, contract. So there were two main conditions for all the prophets as though they have to believe in him, number one, and they have to assist us with Allah. So Allah gave that honor to Isa Islam, to Jesus on behalf of all the prophets. To help Rasulullah. To help Rasulullah means to have the ummah of Rasulullah. In their most, that a time of most dire need, when they will be most in problem and trouble, which is upon the return of the Jah. That will be such a difficult time. The Prophet wasallam said, there hasn't been any Nabi. Ma min Nabi There hasn't been any Nabi who has not warned his people of the coming of the Jah. The Prophet said, if he appears and I'm alive, I'll deal with him. If not, then I leave your matters to Allah. And anybody who recites the first ten verses of Surah Kaf, Allah will take care of him. So Isa alayhi salatu was salam, Allah chose him, gave him that honor to help Rasulullah on behalf of all the prophets by helping the ummah of Rasulullah in the time of their most severe need, which was to take place at the end of time. But in order to keep Isa alayhi salam alive and until that time, if Isa Islam was sent after Rasulullah, closer to the time that he was eventually needed, then Rasulullah would have been Khatamun Nabihim. Then Isa Islam would have been Khatamun Nabihim, the last and the seal of the prophets. But Allah had reserved that honor for Rasulullah. So it was important that Isa Islam be sent before but kept alive for that time. And if he had been kept alive in this world until that time, so he would have already been 2,000 plus years old. You know, when you were 40, you start going down the hill. When you're 50, then your joints and your back start healing. When you're 60, then you need to sit on a chair you have to pray usually. And most people, mashallah, and when you're 60, 70, then you're 70, just relax. When you're 80, you spend most of your time on bed. When you're 90, you can hardly get up. 
So can you imagine if Jesus had been around Isa alayhi salam? Can you see that name? Well, I'm only saying Jesus because many people, they refer to him, but Islamically his name is Isa alayhi salam. In fact, one of our scholars, Isa alayhi uh, Ahmad Dida, may Allah shower his mercy upon him, he used to say when Isa alayhi salam comes back, and if, because Christians also believe he's coming back. So if any Christian comes to, see, to, to meet him and greet him and says, Hello Jesus, he won't give a second look. Because that's not his name. His name, even according to the Bible, is Esau, which is the same as Quran. Uh, so, but when they translated the names uh, they, in English, especially, then they added James to everything. Yahya became John, Esau became Jesus, and so on. Yehovah became Jehovah. Uh, so, and, and so these words, mashallah. So, Jesus wasn't even his name. His name was Isa. Isa ibn Maryam, Isa son of Maryam. So if he was to remain alive in this world for over 2,000 years, it would have been difficult for him to even get around anywhere, let alone deal with a superpower, super evil force like the Jal. So it was inevitable and only appropriate that Isa Islam be kept alive, not in this world, but in the heavens. Where people don't age, where people don't need to worry about anything, where time just stops. So Isa was but to, in order to be raised to the heavens and to be able to reside there, he needed an angel-like personality. Hence, when he was conceived, he wasn't conceived with the union of a man and a woman, but with the blowing of, a, of an angel, super angel, Sayyidul Malaika, Ruh al al Ruh, so that Isa Islam acquires that personality, having acquired that personality, when Isa Islam lived his life accordingly, he started preaching, then the Jews didn't like it. The Jews had a habit of killing the prophets. They killed many a prophets. So when people talk about Gaza and the morning there, no mercy is shown. You can't expect any mercy from them. And they would then show mercy and rahmah and obedience to even prophets. So what can they have for Palestinian children? In fact, Jews enjoy much more happiness under Muslims than Muslims can ever imagine living in the Jews. In Andalusia, Spain, many Jews held prominent posts under Muslims. In Palestine, in the Christians and the Jews lived so much more happily than Muslims ever lived anyway. They took care of them the care of the churches. Alhamdulillah, we have that facility here. We are able to build masjid and so on independent. But still, Muslims have never had anywhere a fraction of the peace under Jewish rule in Palestine uh, that the Jews enjoy uh, with no problems under Islamic rule. So the Jews then set about plotting to kill Isa alayhi salam. And Allah says in the Quran, فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَى مِنُهُمْ الْكُفْرَةِ When Isa alayhi salam felt that Kufr denied and realized their plan they were making to kill Isa alayhi salam. He gathered his disciples. He said to them, who is my helper to Allah? The Hawari Jeen, disciples of Isa alayhi salam, they said, we are Allah's helpers. Whatever Amanna Billah, we believe in Allah and we want you to be a witness that we believe in whatever Allah has revealed. The Quran just as the Quran speaks volume of Maryam salam, the Quran speaks volume of the personality, devotion, truthfulness, loyalty of the disciples of Isa salam. But the Bible says they all left him, deserted him, and as they abandoned him. <coughs> Rather betrayed him. And one of his disciples conspired with the Roman authorities, became a traitor against Isa salam. But the Quran says, no, the disciples of Isa salam were loyal. He said, who is my helper? They said, whoever you pick and choose. The Jews said, we killed Jesus. We killed Isa alayhi salam. The messenger of Allah. Allah says, They didn't kill him. They didn't crucify him either. It was made to appear to them as such that they had killed Isa alayhi salam. So what happened? Isa alayhi salam offered a proposal. Who is it who is willing to die for me 
me and take on my appearance. Allah will impose my appearance upon him. And he was to die on my behalf uh, for, for, to be my companion in paradise. One of them agreed. Allah with his Qudrat imposed Isa Islam's appearance upon him. And in the meantime, Allah says, wa bakaru, wa bakar Allah. They had a plan. Their plan was to arrest and capture Isa Islam, put him on the cross and kill him. Wa bakar Allah. Allah had a plan for Isa salam. And Allah's promise and plan for his messenger is such. Allah says, I will always help my messengers. Help them in such a way. Allah will always remain dominant. His Rasuls. Isa Islam isn't just a prophet. He is a Rasul. Not just a Rasul, but a mighty Rasul. And so he was never ever going to be dominated. Allah said, me and my messengers, we are always dominant. So if Isa Islam had been arrested and captured, he would have been overpowered, dominated. But no, no messenger of Allah was ever overpowered. So they wanted to kill him. So Allah's promise was to save him. And save him how? Because Allah, the best of the saviors, the best of the planets. They had a plan, Allah had a plan, Allah is the best of the planners. So Allah's plan was to save Isa alayhi salam and how? Allah sent Jibreel. He had always been by his side helping him. If you had a friend, he always helps you out. In little issues, minor issues. And when your life is in danger, if he doesn't come to your rescue and help, what good is any previous help? I help Isa with Ruhul Qudus, with the Holy Spirit. So now Isa Islam's life is in danger. So isn't Ruhul Qudus going to come and rescue him? So Allah sent Ruhul Qudus. Allah sent Jibreel with the revelation. Is called Allah, Ya Isa, O Isa. I am going to make the wafi of you. Before I elaborate on this and make it easier for you to understand, this is a very crucial topic, brothers. And this is one of our fundamental, this is our one of those fundamental issues which forms part of our Iman. And unfortunately and sadly, many people deceive humble, simple Muslims. And these simple Simons allow themselves to be deceived and fooled and cheated and misled by not understanding Islamic concepts and teachings properly. Put yourself in this picture. You might have experienced this. If your son is in a class and his other bullies in his class who threaten him, and one day they plan to beat him up, and the son realizes, and he comes to his father, Dad, you know what? I don't want to go to school today. What, son, you got to go to school, what's the matter? You got to go to school. No, dad, I feel scared. They're going to beat me up today. So, don't worry, son, I'm going with you. So now, the father, he comes with his son to school to speak to the headmaster and teacher and to assure his son, don't worry, I'm safe with you. And now, when this son sees those bullies, the gang, he starts shooting, scared. Because he knows they're going to plan to beat him up. So what does the father, he sees his son now shivering, getting scared. So what does he say to him? Son, what are you worried about? I'm with you. What are you going to worry about? If anybody tries to touch you, I'll shoot him out. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. Or if he's got a friend, a tough friend, another bully guy is threatening him and his friend is with him. So he feels scared because the bully is coming. So what does the friend say? What are you worried about? I'm your man. I'll so I'll take care of you, man. Don't worry, you with me. Or does the friend say, no, no, you see, the guy, he feels scared and afraid. Those guys are going to beat me up. Don't worry, I'm with you. So before they beat you up, I'll knock you out. <laughs> Is that what a friend does? Huh? What does he say? Don't worry, I'm with you. So put yourself, understand the situation. It's called Allah, Ya Isa. They want to kill Isa, Isa. So Allah sends revelation, Allah sends Jibreel. On an emergency mission, I like there's a, there's, a, there's a break and you feel threatened, you call the police, Ooh, they come spinning immediately. So Isa Islam feels danger, 
Allah sends Jibreel alayhi salam on an emergency mission. Go! Is God Allah, Ya Isa, inni mutawafika with this revelation to comfort Isa alayhi salam. Oh Isa, don't worry. Is Allah going to say, Oh Isa, don't worry, they want to kill you, I'm going to kill you. Is that what's written here meaning? Here the meaning is, don't worry, they want to kill you, but inni mutawafika, I am going to take you, rescue you. How? Rafiuka ilayya, I'm going to raise you to myself. Does it make sense? But the problem lies, many people, they use this word mutawafika. Mutawafika means going to give you wafat. In Arabic and Urdu as well, the word wafat is used to imply death as well. Like in English, we say someone's passed away. When, when we used to be young, they used to say, kick the bucket. I said to someone, he's kick the bucket. He said, what does that mean, sir? They don't use it anymore. It's old fashioned. There are some words which are clear in meaning. Death means when you say he's dying. Death has overtaken him. Is there any ambiguity in its meaning? Death means, death means death. He's passed away, he's died, he's no longer alive. He's probably been taken and buried to pray janaz over him and he's done and dusted. That's death. Sometimes you say he's passed away. When you say he's passed away, passing by doesn't mean death. It implies, implied upon death but doesn't mean death. Similarly, wafat is implied upon death, but doesn't actually mean death. If somebody said, he passed by here, does that mean he's died now? Or where is Abdullah? Or he passed by a few, few, few hours ago. Does that mean now he's dead? Passed by, came and went. When we say passed away, he came, he's no longer in the world, he's gone to another world. Or we say, we'll do intaqal from again. Intaqal literally doesn't mean death, means to transfer. He's transferred from this world to another world. Guzar gya, passed by. Guzar na doesn't mean to die, but he says, Guzar is dunya se aya, guzar gya after the chalaya. Implies death, but doesn't mean death. Similarly, in Arabic, the word mutawafika is derived from the root word wafa, which means to take totally. Arabic is a very precise and a wonderful language in which you can manipulate the words to give a precise meaning. Like the word ilam. Ilam means knowledge. One with knowledge is called an alim. And to teach, allama. Allama mu'allimun. Mu'allim is teacher, but the root word is ilm is still there. Ilm, alim, mu'allim. To learn is ta'allama. And a learner or a student is known as muta'allim. So the word adding a thought, a root word in Arabic gives it the meaning to acquire and to take. So when you are learning, you are taking knowledge. Ta'allam, muta'allim. A person who takes knowledge, muta'allim. So here Allah is saying, wafa, to take, the wafa to take to yourself, muta'wafika, to take you totally. So Allah was saying, is qala Allah, ya Isa. When Allah said to Isa, oh Isa, inni muta'wafika. I will take you totally. How? I will cause you to be raised to myself. No problem. But because that word mutawafika is a confusing word for people, Allah chose that word because it fits the description totally. Allah was taking Isa Islam totally, physically, spiritually. And these people, they say, the Jews used to say, we killed Isa. The Christians, they say, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Muslims, we believe, Isa Islam didn't die on the cross. They didn't kill him, they didn't crucify him. It was made to appear to them that someone's been crucified. Allah says, Allah raised him to himself. Allah is immensely wise. And what is the wisdom? Allah wants to give all the people of a book an opportunity before he dies to believe in him. And so to be raised, no problem. Why? Because he has that personality. He has an angel-like personality, spiritual personality, conceived 
with the blowing of Jibreel alayhi salam, he can rise to the heavens, he can live there, not be worried about uh, bringing, bringing peri peri shop or a halal pizza shop to eat or drink or whatever. No problem, he has a personal angel-like personality. When he was in this world, here everybody needs to eat. There nobody needs to eat. And he has that personality. People, the Qadianis, they say, well, how can Isa Islam rise to the heavens? There are frontiers where any you can't cross, like that Columbia when he decided to come back. What happened? He burnt out. You can't go up, you can't come down. Well, Allah has already given an example. In the Matala Isa, in the light of Masali Adam. Why can't Isa alayhi salam go up? Adam alayhi salam, Allah built a special motorway for him. He went up in Nija in the Filar de Khalifa. Adam alayhi salam was made on earth, admitted into the heavens, lived there as long as he Allah will. When the time was right for him, Allah sent him down. Him and his wife, they came down, had children here, died here, were buried here, and will rise from here. Isa alayhi salam's life same. Born here, rise to the heavens, live there as long as Allah wills, then come down to earth. The Prophet said, He will then get married, have family, children, die here on earth. For you to find my Qabri, be buried next to me in my grave. Die here, be buried here, and rise from here. Adam alayhi salam made here, put into heaven, lived there as long as Allah will. When Allah saw fit, Allah sent him down. And then when he came down had children, he died here, was buried here, would be raised from him. Isa salam needs to follow the same pattern because Allah has compared him to Adam salam. So if Isa salam doesn't go up, his example isn't perfect. So for Isa salam to fulfill that pattern, that cycle, so Adam salam went up, he came down. How did Isa salam go up? The same way Adam salam came down is the same motorway he took to go up. Same motorway he would take to come down. So Isa alayhi salam can go up, he can come down as well. What does he eat there? Qadianis, they deceive people. What does Jesus eat there? What does Isa alayhi salam eat there? He eats the same things Adam alayhi salam used to eat. And in the living in the, amongst the angels, you don't need to eat. Where does he go and relieve himself? The same way where Adam alayhi salam used to go. But Adam alayhi salam didn't used to go because in there, in the heavens, you don't need to go to relieve yourself. That's a pure place over there. Just as when Allah will take us to Jannah, uh, there's no loose in Jannah. Uh, there's no toilets in Jannah. You won't need to go to toilet in Jannah. So Isa alayhi salam isn't being kept alive here. It's being kept alive in the heavens with the angels. Just as angels don't eat and drink and sleep, uh, Isa alayhi salam similarly doesn't need to eat and drink and sleep. Which way does he pray? Prayer has been obliged upon people in this world, not in the heavens. In the heavens, he is with the angels, so he does the same tasbih as the angels. Uh, but they try and deceive people, and uh, to mislead people. And uh, they say, the, the Jews, they say, he, they killed Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, the Christians, they say he died in the cross for our sins. Muslims, we believe Isa alayhi salam went nowhere near the cross, rather he was raised to the heavens. But along came Mirza Qadiani, he said, Jesus was captured, he was arrested, put on the cross, and he was almost dead. Not quite dead, almost dead. They brought him down, he found his way to the a &E, got emergency treatment, got some pushtas done for him, and then he escaped to Kashmir and lived the rest of his life in Kashmir and died at the age of 125. He lived 92 years, uh, 92 years or so uh, in a retirement. According to the Bible, Jesus after three years of preaching, he appeared at the age of 30 on a three year mission. So three years of preaching have left his mark on two billion Christians. There are roughly two billion Christians in the world today. And how long did Isa Islam preach? Only three years before his ascension to the heavens. But the Qadianis, they say, Isa Islam lived 92 years in retirement in Kashmir. But nobody heard of Isa Islam in Kashmir. In the sense that he ever came down there. In one place, Mirda says, on route to Kashmir, he passed through Afghanistan. And in Afghanistan, he married a woman. 
And so that place where he stayed, the people, the tribe there, uh, they named themselves in relationship to Isa alayhi salam. Uh, they called, they called Isa Khayis. The Qadian said, you know these Isa Khayis, they are heroes of Isa alayhi salam. So one, one of them, he said, well, we have Musa Khayis as well. <laughs> This Musa Khayl as well. Does that mean Musa and Islam came there as well now to be left? One Arab had an argument with the Pathan. And the Pathan said, oh, no inside the Pathan. But one, one Arab had an argument with Pathan. And he said, you guys, Allah had no mercy. Allah didn't send any prophets among you. Allah sent all prophets amongst us. Arabs and Palestine and so on. The Pathan became, and what are you talking about? And you, what do you mean no, no Pagambars, no Prophets in Pathan? Ah, Isa Khan. Who was who? They are not Pagambars, they are not Pagambars. So Mirza Qadiani said, Isa Islam escaped to Kashmir and died in Sidi Nagar at the age of 125. Isa Islam did no such thing. Isa Islam went to no Kashmir. Isa Islam is in a better place than Kashmir in the heavens. When Allah sees fit, Allah will send him. And when Isa Islam comes down, he will come down not in Qadiyan, uh, as Mirza Qadiyani claimed. And he's referred to by the Prophet as Ibn Maryam, not son of Ibn Chirag Bibi. He will come down on the eastern minaret in Damascus, not in Qadiyan. He will descend upon the minaret. Mirza Qadiyani said, let's build a minaret. <coughs> so he said, give me money to build a minaret. And in fact, he died even before they could build one. So he, he didn't even go up the one he wanted to go up. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Isa Islam will die and be buried next to the Prophet وسلم, in Medina. Mirza Qadiyani is buried in Qadiyan. He died in Lahore. All Prophets had single names. No, Adam, Musa, Isa, Daud, Suleiman. Mirza Qadiani said, Allah has named me Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. Not even a double name, a triple name. Uh, no prophet was slave of another prophet. Uh, every prophet, and we are slaves of Allah. Uh, no prophet had this title when he was slave of another man. Uh, all prophets after Isa alayhi salam, they are after Ibrahim alayhi salam or from his progeny. Mirza Qadiani has written in his book that my ancestors were Chinese Mongols. All prophets after Ibrahim alayhi salam were Banu Ibrahim. In Palestine, Banu Ismail, Banu Ishaq, Banu Israel. Mirza Qadiani himself has written his ancestors came from, from Samarkand, China. They were Chinese Mongols. No prophet wrote a book. Mirza Qadiani wrote more than 80 books. His followers have compiled them. In an encyclopedia, they call it Ruhani Khazan, I call it Shaitani Khazan. And no prophet ever wrote a book. Allah sent books. They, they brought books from Allah. Torah given to Musa Islam, Zabur given to Dawud Islam, Injil given to Isa Islam, Quran given to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mirza Qadiani wrote books. No prophet was a poet. Mirza was a poet as well. I'll give you some of his poetry before we just finish. Just a few minutes. Mirza Qadiani has written. He said, I am your man. 1300 years have passed. The Prophet said he was coming years and come, so I'm your man. And Mirza Qadiani says, When Isa Islam comes, I've already explained the world will be filled with peace. There'll be no more problems, no more trouble. When he comes down, there'll be no more battles and wars. When Mirza Qadiani left this world to go to Jahannam on the 26th of May 1908, there wasn't just a war, there was a world war. 1914 World War, 1939 World War II. He said, When Mirza Qadiani left this world, there wasn't just a war, there was a world war. 1914 World War, 1939 World War II. He said, When Mirza Children will play with snakes. If any Qadiani Ahmadi listening, or if you have a friend or a colleague or a neighbor, <laughs> next time his child has a birthday party, you know what to give him as a birthday present. <laughs> Mirza said, children will play with snakes. You've been playing with plastic stuff. Play with the real stuff now, mashallah. But please put in a warning as well. <laughs> he said, kill 
Hulay ni nog mashgalati ro tafan ka. People will forget about bows and arrows. When Mirza left this world, not the only people not forget about bows and arrows, and there was an arms race. Missiles, atom bombs, neutron bombs, and hydrogen bombs. He left the world on an arms race. And now so many wars, Allahu Akbar. But when Isa al Islam comes, there will be no more war after that. Children will play with snakes, lions will play with camels, wolves will drink on the same pond as, mashallah, as sheep. And the Prophet said, When you feed the mal hatta la yakbaru bahad. He will distribute so much wealth, nobody will accept or want it. Is that the case now? Kullu halal. Let it come. <laughs> Whatever way, by hook or crook, we are not here, we are civil. They are some halal, everything halal. Anytime there's an appeal, will they be here for any, any, any good cause here? Palestine or India or Pakistan or wherever, to build a masjid. There was a brother here, mashallah, from Italy, asking for donations to build, help build a masjid in Italy. Anytime there's an appeal for any donation, any way, then that is conclusive proof that Isa al Islam has. He has not come. Because when Isa al Islam will come, Nobody will not only not appeal, you will want to give. Brother, I've got a couple of hundred thousand pounds, I want to give you, man. Don't worry, man, when a couple of million, I'll give you a couple of million. <laughs> Is that what's happening now? Uh, no. People just pull the halal, let it come by fraud, deception, lies, cheating, however. Uh, when Isa al Islam comes, for you feed ulmal, hatta la yakbar ahad, he will distribute so much wealth, nobody will want wealth. Mirza also began to speak. He said, I want to write a book. We should give A to Z of Islam, but I'm a poor man. I want you to help me, sponsor me. Give me money in advance uh, for 50 volumes. And he only wrote five, and then he said, that's it. People say, well, you promised 50. He said, well, the only, the only difference between 50 and five is a zero, so zero doesn't have any meaning. <laughs> but we paid you for 50, man, come on. He said, well, Allah initially ordained 50 prayers, and then he was happy with five. But they said, well, we pay five, but Allah gives us reward of 50. We pay you for 50, you only give us five, it's the other way around. You go, well, it's the same thing. <coughs> Isa al Islam will distribute wealth. Mirza wanted advance payment. And they said, well, Isa al Islam will come down a minaret. He said, give me money to build a minaret. Allah, Allah, Mirza was a total clown, may Allah save us all. Mm -hmm. So I was saying, Isa al-Islam isn't just a historical personality, he is the future of mankind. When he comes, the world will know him, the world will accept Islam at his hands. There will not remain a single person from the people of the book who will not accept him and believe in him before he dies. May Allah, Allah, Allah grant us an understanding of truth. May Allah guide us over the right path so that we can live like Muslims, die like Muslims, and rise like Muslims. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد. ربنا اقرب منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب الينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم انا كافر ونحب الله وكافر من الكريم يا الله وي سيك يو ميرسي فورجيفنس اند بليسنجز فورجيف اس اول جايد اس اول ذا رايت باث يا الله وي ار اول سينفول اند بيك بت يو ار ميرسي فور اند باورفول يا الله فورجيف اس اند جايد اس اول يا الله جايد اس اول سنز اند دوترز يانج اند اول مان اند ويمن Our parents, our public and rulers, Ya Allah, have mercy upon the whole room of your beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In these difficult times of fitr and fasad, Ya Allah, if you decide to save us, Ya Allah, you have the power and authority. Otherwise, Ya Allah, we are destined to be doomed, Ya Allah. We are des destined to be ruined and doomed. Ya Allah, we seek your protection, mercy, forgiveness and blessing. Guide us over to the right path, Ya Allah. Whenever there are people suffering in problems, hardship, Ya Allah, grant them protection and goodness of this world and the life hereafter, Ya Allah. And keep us all in your protection as long as we live. And keep us on Islam as long as we live. And when our time comes to leave this world, take us away on Iman. Wa sallallahu wa sallam 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 wa sallam